Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the NBA Front Office Show, 4th of July special. Happy 4th of July. The NBA not providing any fireworks right now, but hopefully we can still help brighten up your day. I'm Trevor Lane. You can find me on Twitter at Trevor underscore Lane or on Instagram at Trevor Lane NBA. Joined by Keith Smith at Keith Smith NBA. Keith, it was exciting for like a day. And then, and then the NBA offseason, it, it, season, it is just brutally ground to a halt at this point. Yeah, it, it's crazy. I was looking back a year ago, we would have been doing our fifth live show mm-hmm. tonight. And we had been holding them off to like do them like 10, 11 o'clock Eastern because there had been so much throughout the day and we didn't want to miss stuff. So we were trying to hold off. We could have done a show each of the last two days at nine o'clock Eastern and we would have been like, all right. So we missed a minimum signing to a yeah. contender. Like, yeah, I've Urgy never was, signed. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. I have never seen an off season like this. I was talking with uh, friends and even the ones where everybody's waiting on LeBron, everybody was waiting on the Kawhi trade or Kawhi yep. to sign and those kind of things. They didn't slow down like this. Like this is just like we hit everything early and now it's just, that's it. Like yeah, everybody's still out there. We're going to cover all those guys, but they're just kind of waiting now to see what happens with the KD and Kyrie situations. I mean, everybody was waiting on Kawhi at one point, but it was for like a day. And then some teams finally just said, okay, forget it. And just started signing Mm guys. Um, But obviously from Lakers side, everything was completely shut down while we were waiting on on Kawhi. But not like this where it was like free agency got going. And then the effect of the KD trade request, which came out just hours before free agency started. It's like it was a delayed effect where teams were like, Mm -hmm. well, it's so late in the game. We already have our guys. We agreed with them four weeks ago because tampering doesn't happen. Um, And so we're going to do this. And then it was all of the I think it was all the moves that weren't essentially already done. I mean, Shams had what, like seven or eight tweets that were like went off right at the buzzer. (laughs) You know, it was all the moves that weren't already done. The teams just went, nope, putting a stop to that. Let's wait and see how this whole Kevin Durant situation plays out Kyrie situation plays out and then we can figure out where we're going to go from there and then from the other side I think players are doing the same thing Mm -hmm. where players like you know what let's see because who knows somebody could trade away half the roster to get Kevin Durant and suddenly they've got five spots to fill and I could go get starter minutes over here if I join up with this team so I think everybody on both sides both the teams and the players the free agents are just kind of waiting to see what happens and that's kind of just put a a stop to everything going on in, in the NBA world while all, all eyes are on the Brooklyn Nets and waiting for them to decide what they're doing. Yeah, you're spot on with that. I was texting with some players and agents yesterday, uh, as well as teams throughout the last you know few days. And one of the things that an agent told me was, yeah, if, if this ends up being one of those trades for Kevin Durant, where it ends up a you know three or four for one kind of trade, wherever he goes is probably going to be a really good team and they may have roster spots plus rotation minutes available. So we're holding off and we, we may sign there instead of going somewhere else. Uh, There's people who are even looking at the nets and saying like, all right, maybe the nets are, you know, saying, all right, Hey, we still want to compete. So there may be a spot to go in there and go in that direction. Um, San Antonio and Indiana are still sitting on a bunch of cap space. So it it is very, very, uh, you know, just stuck. Right now, the weird thing is, too, we're getting little dribbles of reporting on occasion, right? We, we, Chris Haynes had something a couple days ago, which is yep. even crazy for this time of year. It's normally it's like every couple hours at least. Yeah, right. And it's funny. I went to bed the last two nights, and normally I'm like every five minutes checking my, it feels like yep. every five minutes. Waking up at like four in the morning and kind of yep. groggily checking yeah. just to see, and, and, not, and not even like not even setting yep. alarm just because you're yep. so keyed up about everything. That's me anyway. Anyway. Yeah. And like, I'm no, looking and not this year. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, it was funny because I said, um, I said to a friend, he, he was like, are you watching these summer league games? And I was like, yeah. And the weird thing is I'm actually watching them because there's not, <laughs> there's not news distracting from the summer league games every five minutes right now. Right. So it was funny when I texted you this morning and said, Hey, we should do a show today just to kind of catch up and get, get reset things. Part of my hope was we'd get interrupted midway through it or we'd complete the show. And then all of a sudden we we'd be told, 
like, oh, here's a tweet with a trade and we'd have to jump back on later. So that's the the, the funny part of it. It just, yeah, it, it really is uh, a weird time right now where we're, we're not seeing a lot of action. There's just not a lot going on. So yeah, I do think, um, you know, they, they've, they've kind of get everything held prisoner right now. Well, here's the thing, Keith. I don't blame the Nets. Like, it's oh. easy right now to get frustrated and, and be like, oh, the Nets, they, and I even put as my title, Nets shut down offseason. That, that's misleading, I know. Because it comes across as like, we're blaming the Nets because they've ruined our fun, right? Like, this this was so much fun, and teams are doing all this stuff, and trades are, and then, then the Nets had to come in and be the party poopers because they won't just make, make up their mind on Kevin Durant. Think about logistically, from the Nets' perspective, how many teams do you think, if not submitted formal, full, like serious offers for Kevin Durant, how many teams at least called the check-in on what it would take to get Kevin Durant, right? Uh, just about every sure. team in the league, I would imagine. So yeah, just I in terms hope. of you're in your war room, you're putting these trades, these potential proposals up on the board, you're strategizing what is it that we want most, and teams are making these calls, and you have to at least have a conversation about all of them, even if it's very clearly like, no, this isn't going to, okay, the Sacramento Kings call, they want Kevin Durant. Is there a real deal there? No. Okay. Yeah. Move on. Right. But you still have to be able to have those conversations. And that takes time. When we look at the activity that happened at the beginning of free agency, remember a lot of that stuff happened over the preceding weeks. Right. So it felt like there was a lot in reality. It just got, it was just the big reveal right mm -hmm. in the first day, 24 hours of free agency. So it felt like, Oh my gosh, the NBA is moving at this breakneck pace. It's going to continue this way. No, that was mostly the pre the previous few weeks just kind of getting unleashed. And now the Kevin Durant thing, this is more standard. It takes time for a trade to come, to come together, particularly one of this magnitude. So I don't even fault Brooklyn because logistically this isn't easy to do. And frankly, this is the most important decision that they've had to make in a while. The decision they make here is going to impact this franchise for the next decade so they've got to do everything they can to do their due diligence and, and do their best to get it right. And put on top of it, they're trying to sort through Kyrie Irving trades as well. Yep. So those aren't easy to put together either. So you're in a position here where it's you're trading two guys who make a lot of money. So those are complicated trades, even in the summertime. Uh, you may be in a position where it's, all right, who has cap space left and trying to rope one of those teams into, hey, can you do a three-teamer and eat this salary for us? Oh, you need, you know, instead of then the value gets routed to us, it's getting routed to you. We don't really like that. And and that's just where it gets really, really messy because all of a sudden it starts turning into, all right, yeah, you know, let's just say Kevin Durant in the Suns, in the Nets are like, all right, Suns, we, we, that's where we want to go. That just becomes hard because it's our, well, there's, if it's DeAndre Ayton, there's base year compensation. You also have this Ben Simmons factor, which is because Ben Simmons is a designated rookie uh, extension player. There's like 16 other players that can't be acquired because they're also on the same kind of contract. So that makes that uh, very messy. So yeah, we're, we're in just a weird, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. Also too, the Nets don't necessarily really want to, bottom out completely and just go youth movement because they don't own their first round picks for the next several years. So at some point that turns into sunk cost, right? Just like it did after the Boston trade, sure. but you just gotta, you, you, you roll with it and just figure it out. So yeah, this is not an easy one. So we'll see, you know, where this goes um, with, with this. So I want to flip it from KD because there's really nothing even being reported there. Well, now, there's one about, thing. Before oh, okay. we get to KD, get to Kyrie, no, we need ahead. to talk real quick about KD. Um, we just saw in the NBA draft the Vegas odds shift dramatically late to Paulo Bancaro being the number one yes. pick, right? Even as a lot of the top newsbreakers were saying, no, 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 it's Jabari Smith. It's still Jabari Smith at the top of the board. The Vegas odds reflected what was really going on. Obviously, somebody knew something. The Vegas odds ha suddenly have the Raptors surging to be one of the teams that is now more, I don't think they're the most likely right now, but one of the teams no, that is now Phoenix more likely to land him. What do you attribute to that, that to like, is this, you think something is going on behind the scenes where the Raptors are going to wind up being the team to come in and grab him. Just like Paolo get Bancaro winds up suddenly shooting up in terms of the, the odds of going number one. And then lo and behold, he's the first overall pick. Yeah. I think there's probably a couple things with this one. I think, 
Some of it probably is the idea around uh, Toronto can go get him, right? They have the ability to put together a really nice trade package while also still having very good players left behind after to put with Durant to put a really good team on the floor. Um, there's also the Masai Ujiri factor. Like he, I say this all the time, more than any uh, GM in the league, he'll step up and take a home run cut and see if he can make it happen. He's not afraid. He's, he's going to do that. He's got the gravitas to do it. He's built a championship level team there in Toronto. I mean, remember everybody was like, why are they trading for Kawhi Leonard? He's not going to stay there. And everybody was right. He didn't stay there, but they won a title. So it didn't really matter uh, in the end. So yeah, he'll, he'll do it. If, if he feels like the right deal is there, he'll absolutely do it. Even if it is, you know, all right, this is this one's a little different, right? Because because Duran has three more seasons under contract right. after this year. Um, but that is, you know, that just changes it just slightly. But yeah, it is. Uh, it's hey, I'm not surprised the Raptors are up there. I've been throwing them out there for a while, saying like, I wouldn't be surprised here if they make a run. You can also deliver some players to the Nets that would make them probably feel pretty good about, all right, we can still put a competitive team on the right. floor next season. Matters. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let's go to Kyrie. Yep. Um, with this, I, I don't want to put it exactly this way, but it seems like it's kind of Lakers or nobody right now. Um, here's what I want to ask you being the Lakers guy. Yeah. We got reported. That Kyrie, those are the, the, the pillars. On what happens after Kyrie for Russ, if that's the set part of the trade? The, the discrepancy seems to be the Lakers want Seth Curry mm -hmm. and a healthier player, while the um, Nets want to send Joe Harris for instead of Seth Curry. So they want to send Joe Harris, bigger contract, not as healthy. If you being the Lakers guy, I'm sure you probably assume, prefer Curry to Harris to alter things. Would you let that keep you from making that trade? No, no, I, I would not. Um, this is this is the saving grace for the Lakers in my mind. If you can find a way to get this done, this is. I mean, we. I had a lot of Lakers fans tell me the 2022 2023 season ended the moment Russell Westbrook picked up. His his trade option, which or, or his uh, player option, which I think is overkill. I think it's it's a bit sure. hyperbolic. But but in any event, this, the sense is that you probably can't win with Russ, AD, and LeBron together. Kyrie, you've got your own issues there. I mean, Ryan McDonough, yes, the former Suns GM, yesterday was on Twitter and was asked like, in terms of how desirable these players are, rank them, you know, rate them one through ten. He said, Russ is a one and Kyrie is a two. You know, we're not, we're not talking about these guys that <laughs> yeah. like are, are players that everybody is trying to go get or anything, but for the Lakers, Kyrie is just a better fit on the court. And maybe you've got a puncher's chance next season if you're able to get him. So I'm not letting Joe Harris be the sticking point, particularly because it's not like Joe Harris is um, a guy who is in a position that they just flat out don't need. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they need shooting on this team. Yep. It's not like Joe Harris is a guy that would come in and you just go, oh, there's no utility here for him. We have no need for the guy who does it. It's not like you've got three point guards already on your team and he'd be a fourth point guard or something. No, mm -hmm. he provides a skill set that you need. So I'm not letting that kill the deal for me if I'm the Lakers. Now, again, it's not my money to spend. And Joe Harris makes significantly more. And then when you get to the luxury tax, it only amplifies that. But what I'm doing if I'm the Lakers is I'm using that as a concession. I'm saying, okay, well, look, if we're willing to take on Joe Harris, then X protections are on this pick or, you know, whatever, right? You're using that as a negotiating piece in, in order to get the deal done. But I'm not drawing a hard line in the sand and saying, nope, has to be Seth Curry. We're not taking Joe Harris. But again, we've seen the Lakers blink at spending money. We saw it with Alex Caruso. They, they, he offered to take less and they said, no, no, thank you. We don't, we don't want to spend that kind of money. So that's the concern right now for Lakers fans. It's like, are the Lakers going to balk at spending the money required in order to take on Joe Harris? And are they really going to let this thing fall apart over that? I can't say it's going to happen, but if it's me again, not my money, I would not let it, this trade fall apart over Joe Harris versus Seth Curry. Yeah, that's where I am too. I think to if healthy, 
I realize the money's long, but I think Joe Harris almost even feels a little bit more of a need than mm-hmm. Seth Curry. I get it. They're both shooters, but Harris has a little more size and he's a far better defensive player than Curry is. So you throw him out there in lineups with Kyrie, LeBron, AD, and whoever the fifth guy is, and you're probably pretty well set. I think that's probably your closing group. So, yeah, I, I get it. Like, I understand the idea of, yeah, is he healthy? And, and maybe that's something that hasn't been fully put out there. Maybe he's not ready, going to be ready to go. Maybe there are lingering problems with that ankle. But, yeah, it's tricky. I will say, too, I just unrelated. I apologize. I know my internet is spotty. It's been that way all day today. But it's 4th of July, so I don't know exactly that the uh, internet provider is on top of getting this fixed for us. But we wanted to get this show in despite that. So we're just going to power yes. through. So I apologize to everybody who's uh, watching and listening. Um, last thing I'll add is that Keith, you and I talk. Oh, the, sorry. You cut out there right when I was talking. <laughs> See? That, was, that was a great, that was a great example of what, what we're like dealing with today. <laughs> but you and I talk all the time about like who benefits reading between the lines on stuff like that, on, on stuff that's being made public. This Kyrie situation, obviously I'm in the thick of it, but it has been like a case study in negotiating through the media. Like you've got one person says, Oh, you know, no other team wants Kyrie. So clearly, you know, the Lakers have the leverage. And then you've got Woj comes out late late last night and is saying, saying like, oh, you know, uh, the Lakers have yet to put forth an aggressive offer and all that. Like, <laughs> where, well, okay, what, where do you think that's coming from? Where do you think the other stuff's coming from? Right, like this has been, we've seen a lot of that going back and forth here. Just understand it's all, it's all part of the process these days. Yeah. It's just the way it goes. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's exactly it. It's just the game. That is played. So uh, I will say this too. I haven't shaved. I'm thinking about not shaving for until till KD and Kyrie are both traded. So I oh might boy. look like Gandalf here uh, in a little <laughs> bit, but we'll see. I like it. I like it. A uh, an NBA off season slowdown yeah. beard. Yeah, put play, play. Yeah, my this is my version of a playoff beard. It it won't look like Gandalf though because it grows in all patchy and spotty, and I'll look like. <laughs> So I probably will shave because about, I'm about a day from it really being way too itchy and bothering me. So you know, if I go more than a couple of days, I don't, you know, I'm not a fan. <laughs> but all right, want to move on and we'll talk kind of guys that are left on the market. Yep, let's do it. Perfect. So players that are still out there on the market. And again, a lot of these guys are kind of waiting to see what ultimately happens with this KD and Kyrie situation. Um, this list is not sorted in any particular way, except, well, it's by team here, but, um, but it's not like we're ranking this top free agent guy, number one, and then go on from this. So this is (laughs) reverse alphabetical by team, I guess, is the way we inadvertently sorted it because our initial list was not. Yeah. So, uh, Thomas Bryant been linked to three teams, the Celtics, the Raptors and the Lakers. Uh, the Celtics are the Celtics still in on Thomas Bryant? I, I, you know, they picked up Luke Cornett. They've done a few other things. Gallinari. What do you, what's your, yeah, I mean, they seem to be. So I I think the idea with Thomas Bryant is they can get him great. I I think they'd like to add another big because after trading Daniel Tice, they're one big short. I don't think the intention by any means is to go in with Luke Cornett as the fourth big in the rotation. Mm -hmm. Um, Gallo can play the four, but then you don't really have a backup five, but they're, they think for them, it's yeah. If we can get Thomas Bryan on a minimum, great. If we can, we'll figure it out. We'll move on to another name on the list. Okay. Um, Interesting one. And again, somebody who, what we heard is that he's essentially looking at this as though like everybody's money is the same. A minimum is a minimum is a minimum. So he's kind of letting the dust settle and then seeing yeah. what makes sense for him. Raptors yeah. interesting for him, by the way. Yeah, they've got a lot of bigs now, too, because right. they re-signed Chris Boucher. They've got that. That's what I'm yeah. saying. But that could be one where clear a couple of them out in a trade. And now all of a sudden you're you're sitting on something different. Uh, the next guy on the list, we'll we'll get I'll get uh, the spot track team to get him removed. Tomas Sadaransky did agree with uh, uh, Barcelona over right. in Spain, so we will not see uh, him coming back. Uh, we're not by no means, folks. If you're watching, we're not going through every day. Right. Yeah, we're just hitting on a few. Him. Uh, there's still you know, 100 or so guys out there um, but yeah we do uh, Wancho Hernan Gomez cleared waivers from, from the Raptors so Bo Cruz available we'll see if anybody uh, wants to jump somebody will at some point mm-hmm. uh, there Hassan Whiteside veteran center depth available um, let's keep 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 on scrolling this one because it gets 
the Eric little Pascal. Danilo Gallinari, we already put him into uh, free agent stats. He does still need to be waived by San Antonio, and then by happen. Boston, uh, we'll we'll acquire him uh, there. Um, Jeremy Lamb maybe could help a team on a minimum oh, man, somewhere. Uh, Josh Jackson probably a. I don't know. What would the I think he's had uh, had his multiple opportunities here, so I don't know. We'll we'll see. You know what he does. Macklemore, eh, I, I don't know on that one. Yeah, he he could be like a mid-season guy, mm-hmm. like somebody needs, uh, you know, a shooter is injured or something, and then you pick him up. Yeah, uh, this guy DeAndre Ayton, he's like kind that? of the biggest free agent name still on the board. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the other thing that's tied up in this Kevin Durant thing is all the Ayton stuff has been kind of shut down, and we've heard this stuff yep. that like the Nets don't really want Ayton that much, so. What happens here with with him? Like this is kind of like it's almost yeah. been eclipsed by all the KD stuff because this was going to be like one of the big stories of the offseason, if not the big story. Where does DeAndre Ayton go? Does he actually wind up back in Phoenix? He may at, at this point. I, I'm you know there's a potential this could just be a fine. I sign the qualifying offer and I'm just gonna yeah. play out one more year in Phoenix and then we'll we'll do this dance again next year but as an unrestricted free agent that could be the way this one uh, all kind of comes down and comes together it's really curious though that he's still like in no movement at all in his market because of presumably the Suns being tied to KD in a way they would get him would be likely somehow to put Aiden in some form of trade somewhere else but that would be part of the salary matching. Right. Uh, James Harden, we know what the deal is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we saw he was just at a big 4th of July party. So I would I'd presume maybe tomorrow, Wednesday, when he's recovered from partying, they'll get that <laughs> deal. Hammer it out and finished. Uh, no problem. 76ers take, must be so happy. Yeah, he's going to take whatever <laughs> is left right under uh, keeping them under the hard cap. Right. Um, They're I happy in that sense. Yeah, exactly. Right. For sure. Um, Isaiah Roby, interesting, was waived yeah. by the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, I think somebody's going to get a pretty good player here. I, I think he'll get claimed because uh, he's a very small. It's a, only a $1.9 million contract. So I think uh, most teams will probably take a shot on claiming him. Um, and then, then we'll, go, we'll go from there. But he's somebody that should get claimed. Um, shot 44% from three. I know – We'll see if that's real, if that lasts. But if that's real, he's a guy who, you know, can play the four and the five, maybe a little bit of three, five or four, five. Um, but a guy who can play. So, so let's see. This rarely comes up in the like. I would. I don't even know where to look to see the waiver claim order in the NBA. Yeah, right it now. should be the end of last year's the uh, uh, season Standings. records. So, uh, what would that be at the top? Would be. Detroit, Houston. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. Interesting. Uh, we'll find state. Go find if you're interested. Go find the standings. Reverse it. Hmm. That'll that's, be it. That's what it'll be. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's go. Keep going. I mean, it get. Yeah. It's, it's pretty thin. It's pretty, it's pretty thin. I mean, hey, Udonis even... Haslam. Did you see the story that that the Heat actually sent like people yeah. to his house to meet with him yep. as a, like a sign of respect? They want to bring him back. He's 42 years old. Yeah. They want him back on the bench for 20th year. Back on the bench. Caleb Martin, uh, he's one of the, you know, kind of underrated, still pretty good player, still out there. His restricted status, though, making a mess. Yes, right? that's that's yeah, the that's, problem. It's the restricted yeah. status. His his brother got a nice payday. Yep. So, so we'll see there uh my internet's playing games again so we're probably going to cut this somewhat short um <laughs> so hey i sent trevor a text uh just the other day and i was like it's kind of a sign of how rough the lakers season was that basically every key lakers free agent that isn't a weak monk is still available Look at i mean this. these are all the guys who ended when and gabriel should come off there now i'll get that right. updated um but all and these mason guys, jones and back mcclong those are kind of g league yeah, guys two two ways yeah but those are that's those were the guys that finished the year on the roster for the Lakers. I mean, Ellington, Bradley, Howard, you know, Mello. I think Mello still can play. I wonder mm-hmm. if he's waiting to pick a spot and land with somebody. So. so we'll we'll see. Um, hey, let's pause though, real quick before we go on to the next team. How uh, do you, what, what what's your uh, Cole Swider stock looking like? <laughs> <laughs> 
I've been trying to like like pump the like obviously it's great and we're having fun with it and I'm sure. you know we're we we've dubbed him the amazing Spider Man so um so we're we're enjoying it obviously he shot ri a ridiculously high percentage from three um but that's not sustainable he loudly proclaimed that he's the best shooter in the draft many times <laughs> um that was you know pre uh pre summer league starting and, and pre draft but. Uh, he's shot the ball very well, and that's great to see. He, his shooting stroke looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. Six foot nine, so he's got some size. The question is, what can he do defensively? What can he do to help you on the boards? Guys who can just shoot may have a place in the league, but guys who can shoot and do at least one other thing really well uh, will, particularly if that one other thing is defense. And so far, we haven't really seen that. So that's what I'm keeping an eye on with him and understanding that it's summer league, and so you don't want to get too high or too low on a player during summer league, but... Nonetheless, after a disastrous season, it's been fun to have something positive to cheer for. I will, I will admit that. No, for sure, and that's the fun of summer league, right? Is getting yep. getting into it, buying in a little bit of the overreaction stuff. Uh, you know, Jay Huff is a uh, you know the second coming of uh, he's look good, Shaq. You know, so Jay Huff honestly is a guy who probably should be on an NBA roster. Yeah, um, at the end I, of that's what I've been saying. He looks like an mm -hmm. NBA player. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, Kind of down a little bit lower there. TJ Warren. We don't know what's going on with TJ Warren. I'm Weird. guessing two things. One is I'm starting to wonder if there might be some health stuff going on there. Yeah. Maybe he's not quite ready to go. But this may also be one where at this point it's like, hey, let's see where this shakes out. There may be roster spot minutes available uh, for me. So why now where it's all kind of becoming equal in Like I'm seeing fans of 30 teams essentially right now posting on social media saying, yeah. could we get TJ Warren? Yeah. Maybe we can add him for a veteran minimum because now the money's drying up and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's weird given the supply and demand situation in terms of wings. It's strange that he's still out there and makes you ask that question. Why not, not to go all Brian Windhorst on me, but now why would he still be, <laughs> still be out there? Um, that's uh I, there's something going on there that's that's maybe a little bit odd, and so I'm I'm interested to see how all this plays out with with TJ Warren and where he ultimately lands, and if the health is still some sort of a concern, because that would explain why he's still sitting there when a lot of people had him pretty high on their list heading into free agency. Yeah, absolutely. A three four who can score the ball the way he can should have been pretty high on people's list, but there's got to be something going on. Uh, Dennis Schroeder, probably yeah, another year. Him. This might be a year at the minimum for Schroeder. He turned down $84 million. Oh, man. Yeah. He's yep. not like he's not a terrible player. He's not no. like. Yeah, he's not. Yeah. If you need a bench scoring guard, there's, yeah. you know, you, there's worse guys already on rosters. For sure. Than him. It's just it's got to be kind of that right fit. And you have to have a team where you can say, all right, for your 15 to 25 minutes a night. Go do your go shoot 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 do your right. thing and off you go. But uh, Warriors guys, Nemanja Bjelica is headed back overseas. Um, we know this now. Uh, I kind of like Frank Jackson. I think he can play a little bit. You had him high game. on your list of uh, free agents. I did. So yeah, I'm a little surprised. You know, I think you know team's going to get a steal probably on a minimum for him. Uh, Bryn Forbes. Let's see. Did he did, sign somewhere? He, he did. Yeah. Let me look. Where yeah, did he we must land? Um, Bryn it Forbes. Was... Timberwolves. There uh, it is. One year minimum. So we'll get that one one updated too. Uh, Austin Rivers is a quality backup. Mm -hmm. Just a just a quality yep. pro guard that can give you that can give you some minutes, and yep. uh, and he's still sitting out there. Yep, Boogie too. Yeah. Uh, let's see what my guess is with Boogie Cousins. This will be now he'll pick his spot. Now he'll wait and see, you know, does somebody have an injury? Is there a spot he can really play and go? Doesn't it feel like he should be older than 31? Yes. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. It feels like he's been around forever. Yeah. Plus he's always kind of moved like he's old, even before the injuries. <laughs> right. Like he did. He was never a super you know, athletic guy. He's always been more of a bull and strong. Uh, speaking of the, what what Colin Sexton, right? They call him the young bull. Yep. Still sitting there in restricted free agency. My guess is this is Cleveland's probably waiting him out and saying like, hey, here's a team-friendly extension. 
or you can sign the qualifying offer. Which way mm-hmm. do you want to go? Because there's probably nobody in the running for him. It's San Antonio would make some sense if they wanted to put him at the point for Sexton because yeah. they don't have a lot at point guard uh, left they over after win? trading away um, DeJounte Murray. Do the Spurs want to win right now, though? Yeah, probably not. But he's like young that's... enough that you just plug him in with all your kids, right? Sure. And go. So, I don't know. Uh, Tristan Thompson, probably catch on somewhere at some point at the end of somebody's bench. Montrez Harrell, best. who knows? The, the legal they, situation's got to play out. Mm-hmm. Same with Miles Bridges. Um, yeah. The domestic violence stuff. I, I saw. Did it happen? Last I saw was that the the Hornets were going to pull the qualifying offer. It hasn't been, uh, hit any kind of official transaction log, so okay. so we'll see on that one. Um, it again, yeah. probably probably let's see how everybody's stuff fills out. If somebody needs a point guard, they can grab it, and then the Nets. Kind of collection of vets, Lamarcus Aldridge, Blake Griffin. You know, probably at least Griffin, I think, will play somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see what that looks like. Lou Williams for the Hawks, still out there as well. Um, Sharif Cooper at this point on the Hawks. I kind of like him as a yeah, draft guy a couple of years ago. He's probably just going to be back on a two way. But guys, you get the sense. This is, <laughs> it's pretty dry out there. Sure. The market, we said this, the free agent class was not very good. It dried up very quickly, so now it's 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 those last couple of big trades to come down, and then we'll see. And then my guess is we'll start seeing the rest of these guys fly off the boards. But there's guys who should be on NBA teams right now. Oh, they're still sitting out there. That if what if not for this Durant situation, they'd be getting signed right now or getting yeah, yeah. they're coming to agreements right now. Nobody can yeah. sign until the next. But a couple guys on the screen, right even Kessler Edwards, Kessler David Edwards Duke Jr. Those yep. two guys can play. They should be somewhere. Skylar Mays should probably be on a team somewhere. And that's not even to mention the, you know, you know, 10, 20 vets we talked about as we scrolled through, but yeah. Yep. That's where we're at right now. That's the current state of the league. Um, like I said, we are all just right now waiting to see what happens. And a lot of these players too, waiting to see what happens with Kevin Durant, with Kyrie Irving, what ultimately happens with like Deandre Jordan. Once those dominoes start to fall, I think, we're going to see things open up again and we'll see agreements take place. But right now, everything is just being held up by this whole situation. And again, can't fault the Nets. They've got to get this right. But uh, who knows when this is going to actually get, it could happen. We, we could get a Woj bomb right now. Or it could be a week from now. We just, we have no way of knowing. <laughs> you were trying to speak it into existence. I appreciated that. I'm right trying. I'm trying. Keith, <laughs> I am so nervous. I've got my flight. To Vegas yep. tomorrow for that's Summer exactly when I'm expecting it. <laughs> it's go- that's when it's going to happen. It's going to be while I am completely disconnected and I'm in the air. I know that's when it's going to happen. You're going to land to 35 terrified. texts from me saying, What, how quick can we record? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> and I'm gonna be like, Okay, how quickly can I get an Uber and get to the <laughs> yeah. hotel? And yeah, right. it's thankfully the Vegas airport is not very far from the hotels, so true, you know, it, but. The check-in process of the Vegas hotels often is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I am. I'm nervous. I'll tell you that, man. I'm, I'm nervous about what can go down tomorrow. I was really hoping that this stuff was going to get done today. Who knows? Maybe we'll, we will still see see some fireworks for Fourth of July. But right now, it, it feels like this thing is all just kind of jammed up. And if that's going to be the case, cool. Push it back one more one more day. Wait till the sixth, please. When uh, what 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 would ruin nights the most tonight? Right, like if it like. Eight o'clock Eastern, like as everybody's oh, yeah. getting ready to watch fireworks, but you got to wait for it to get dark for there to be fireworks. Maybe that's what Woj is waiting on too. He's yeah, he's going to drop that right at like when it whatever sunset is, and off we go. And it's dark enough for fireworks, and there's the big fireworks, and then you've got people abandoning families all over to go break down Kevin Durant trades. <laughs> oh boy, I yep. I now fully expect it while you're uh, in 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 route. To yeah, Las Vegas. I know it's it's happening. That's that's yeah. the way this is going to go down. But <laughs> uh, such is this NBA life. Yep. All okay. right. Well, everybody, thank you guys for for joining us. Thank you for watching over on YouTube. Thank for you for listening over on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you do subscribe. Give us that five star rating and review. We will be back soon to break down everything else that's gone on. Hopefully, next time we've got a Kevin Durant trade to discuss. Until then, see ya and stay safe.